And the thing I would say for young people, what you do in your 20s and 30s will either reward you in your 50s and 60s and beyond, or it will bite you in the butt. At 68 and three-fourths, right here, I'm Living Proof. Well, hello, Dr. Joe D. Bear. Welcome to the show. I'm so glad to have you with us. Thank you. It is my honor and pleasure, Rima. Absolutely. Thank you. I'm going to launch off really quick. Tell me something. If I put you in front of everybody in the world and I said, what is the one thing that every person should be doing on a daily basis to stay healthy? Take care of you and your world first. And that involves my 10 rituals to rock your day. Easy, easy peasy. Have an attitude of gratitude. And in, if you go to drjody.com, it lists the 10 things, but just take a walk with exercise. There is a walk that builds your anatomic nervous system. And then you come in, you shower, hot, cold, hot, cold, hot, cold, because it builds your immunity. And then 15 minutes of meditation. Do you know, Rima, these 10 rituals will take you less than an hour. And what foods should you do? It's food combination food combination, keep them the alkaline side. And what one thing should everyone do? A parasite cleanse. And it is a parasite cleanse according to the seasons of the year. I would be happy to take anyone to the, you know why? Because if you breathe, do you breathe? I breathe. <laughs> we breathe. You have parasites and you are either going to be disease free or they're going to overtake you like aliens. Detox or tumors, your body makes a choice. It's interesting. I've never heard someone say that the cleanse is different per season. Yes. Why yes. is that? Because the weather is. I mean, I live in Florida. It's hotter than a pistol. Are we going to eat the same way in the summer? It's according to ancient Chinese medicine. We're we going to eat the same way in the summer. Well, why should you do your detoxing the same way in the summer? There is a systematic approach, Rima, because as Chinese medicine says, you eat raw when it's hot outside because mm. you have more heat in your body. So you want cool, raw foods. Now, even it was cold today, even in Florida, I have a, my first sweater on. What do you do? You have lightly steamed and cooked foods because it's cold, hot, cold, hot, cold, just like that shower behind you. It works together in harmony. Thank you. That's always been one of my things is how do you differentiate from season to season? Because a lot of people get into a routine and it becomes a rut. It doesn't become a good routine for them. And they don't realize that by the season, we got to change how you're living and what you're doing. So mm -hmm. that's why I asked specifically that. So if you were looking at someone who is young, and young, I'm saying early 20s, and they're not very healthy in their habits. What would be the first thing you would advise them to begin doing? First thing, get away from the Franken foods. It's like death on the installment plan. Number Elaborate two, Franken food. Ah, uh, any of the things that you drive through. Try, nice. Thank you. Drive through foods. I call them Franken foods because they're all the same. They're a full of trans fats. And the other thing, there are two food groups, additives and preservatives. Quick story. When my son moved from the, our house to, to go to college at the University of Tennessee in 2000, he had a Whopper I found in his closet. The receipt was still on it. It was dated in 1995 and it still looked the same. Oh my, because what do they put in Franken foods and fast foods? They put formaldehyde. What do we use formaldehyde for? We use formaldehyde to embalm dead bodies. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you have a choice, detox or tumors. And the thing I would say for young people, what you do in your twenties and thirties will either reward you in your fifties and sixties and beyond, or it will bite you in the butt at 68 and three fourths right here i'm living proof you know i love that that you just touched on that cuz i have a young friend that i've been teaching coaching mentoring all that stuff 
-hmm. And the health style is a lot of this stuff, but then they go get their blood work and their blood work is fine. So they go, well, what's the problem? So I'm glad you're touching on that. Excuse me, but it's cumulative. I mean, I just want to impart everything to your, it is cumulative. It's those death, death by, by a thousand cuts. You don't even know that you're doing it because, oh, the blood works fine. I must be fine. Not necessarily. What else would we be looking at besides blood work so that someone understands that what they're taking in is creating their life, their future? What else besides um, another blood work? indicator? Excuse me. What else besides blood work? Yes. Um, another indicator is when you get up in the morning. Are you tired? Or are you full of energy? Mm. If you're tired after sleep, then something is off in balance in your body, and you must be rebalanced. Really easy thing to do. I don't know if I've ever done an interview of many that I've done, Rima, and here is no exception. I talk about pee and poop. I have to. Parasite cleanse, you've got to get it out of you. The other is to get the simple pH strips. They look like a match. Don't get the ones in the, in the jar. Get the ones that look like matches in a book of matches. Test your pH in the morning. It should be 7.4 or above. If it's not, things are not right in River City inside of you. Mm. Now, you have been hosting a TV show. Yes. Milkshake Moments, and yes. you also are on radio with yes. also Building Prosperity, I believe. Building, building Fortunes. fortunes. Mm -hmm. What is it that you go over and teach the listeners through those shows? Arima, that's, uh, that's really, it's such a variety of things. On Building Fortunes Radio, who I've been with the incomparable Peter Mingles, he's just an amazing, uh, he's amazing, uh, person on blog talk and he just found me i was i would have just gotten remarried to the love for the rest of my life dr bob bear and i was branching out and doing new things and he said i want to feature you so it's evolved i brought in guests that have been my clients i brought in famous people sometimes i just talk i'll say what i'm going to talk about this sunday as we're coming into these thing called the holidays whether mm -hmm. you celebrate them or not we gather with people. Gathering means food. What do you want to do? Do you want to have the, the scale move to the right? You want it to stay the same. So I'm going through 10, 10 power plans to make your holidays amazing. And it's and it goes, it doesn't even have to be at this time. It could be graduation, the 4th of July, a, a takeout barbecue, tailgating, or Susie's bar mitzvah. You were going to get getting together for everything. How do you make these choices? Because as I've always said, what I do as a health coach, transformation is an inside job. That's the radio show. TV show, which is Life's Milkshake Moments. It's live on Traverse TV at 6 p.m. Eastern, every single Thursday of the week of the world. I usually bring on a guest. I bring it on a guest because my quote is, life is like a milkshake. Choose your ingredients wisely. And when you do, life will be oh so sweet. So what is that milkshake moment that just turned you on? Then it evolved into Mindset Monday because in this COVID and post-COVID era, oh my goodness gracious, mm -hmm. mindset is everything. Mindset will give you your skill set to create your assets. So I'm always bringing one mindset person it's just have lunch with me on Mondays and Rima how that evolved is that Traverse TV heard me again for some reason picked me up and said we'd love to give you your own network and so it's on the Healthopedia network with Traverse TV and then recently just two weeks ago I was picked up by local Orlando CBS affiliate channel 55 so it is absolutely my goal it has been in my 60s, now as I'm departing them, to bring my message to over a million people. And the viewership in Orlando 55 is 2 million every single week. I'm so blessed. Thank you for asking. Of course, because as the listeners and the viewers see this and hear this, you have been an alternative health pioneer 
for over 42 years. And what that means to people that actually get the chance to listen to you and see you is how do they alter their lives so that they come better in how they live? It's not about the millions of viewers. It's the each individual that you get to impact. Would Mm -hmm. you take me through your journey of how did you even get started in the health field to begin with? And I would love to do that. But as we're saying one step, I'm going to get, I just feel compelled to give your listeners, your viewers, one step. Everybody goes to the grocery store. Everybody Mm -hmm. goes to the grocery store. When you go in, spend the majority of your time around the perimeter of a grocery store. The only thing you need as you go in is for mops and brooms. And if you can keep that in mind, then you say, okay, what can I do? And you say, where can I begin? Look at your arms about the size of a bushel basket and said, this time I choose your ingredients wisely. I choose a bushel basket that looks like it's fresh inside of my, my cart and inside of your cart. Eventually it'll be the whole thing. And they'll say, what do you do? And I said, well, I heard health coach Jody. <laughs> That's wonderful. That's a very good tip for a lot of people not to walk down the aisles of all the preservatives <laughs> is the nicest way to say it. So take me through the journey of how you even became a health coach and why it means so much to you. And I've got to say, Rima, my goodness gracious, what great questions you have. You you must be a pro at interviewing. That's for sure. <laughs> I can tell. I can feel your heart. I felt your energy even when we spoke yesterday. And I will say that my background was one of a, of a little girl from Laurel, Montana, brown eyes, brown ponytail. And I found out when I was five years old, Rima, I could sing. I could sing. I could sing. And sing, I did. And why this was so important is that my mother had lost her soulmate at 36. I was three and a half years old. She was in the throes of depression, but my soulful singing brought her hope. It brought her out. That was that out to it, that intuition that I must have had as even in my theta state as a young child to bring this to my mother. Here she was a widow woman. She gave me music lessons, gave me piano voice lessons, of with money she could ill afford her giving me that hope in my vision. I found myself in my twenties singing all over Europe, North America, everywhere. I was singing with the New York city opera company and all of the main opera houses in the world. Well, ever have anything that hits you out of the blue. (laughs) I was on my way with the St. Paul chamber orchestra and going to be singing Handel's Messiah, the lead role, Rejoice Greatly as the soprano role, broadsided by a Lincoln Continental. My next waking moment, I was face down in a surgical halo, paralyzed, paralyzed Mm -hmm. from the shoulders on down. What was I going to do? And my mother, again, she looked at me. She came the next day, not feeling my body, but everything above my shoulders was pain. And she said, Jody, the doctors only see what they see. They don't know who you are. So ladies and gentlemen, listening, who are you? Who is that person that's inside of you at this time? I became committed because I knew what little I knew because I always took lemon water. I always kept anti-inflammatories with me as a singer because your vocal cords were here. That's what I did. I took that one thing. I made it hot cold, hot, cold, just like that shower. I got out of that bed by myself and I walked out of that hospital six months later. Because ladies and gentlemen, Rima, you have new cells in your entire body every six months. So if you don't like what you see, turn around and say, in six months, I'm going to be a different person. Fast forward two years. I'm now a young mother. I have one baby and one on the way. But I have to digress for a moment. I had somebody call me out when I was expecting our first son. And I was at a La Leche League meeting. I knew that La Leche is Spanish for the milk. Okay. And I'm looking over at that refreshment table 
Now, I am kind of outspoken. I'm going to say what's on my mind. And I had even less of a filter when I was younger. And I said, what's over here? Are these these two food groups, additives and preservatives? <laughs> I did not know, Rima, that it was the president of La Leche League International. And she said, with more attitude than I said, well, why don't you do something about it? And that propelled me to getting my first certification as a health coach. Never know where the tap on the shoulder comes from, do you, Rima? Yes. <laughs> then, as and I was, I was saying. Then I'm now with my oldest son and a newborn baby. They were both under 18 months. Ever get that phone call? That phone call because that's when you have landlines and things. I was finishing up the dishes. The phone rings. It's my mother, the mother that gave me hope, and she said on the other line, I, she said, Jody, and I'm going, mom, this, this doesn't sound right. Are you okay? She said, no, Jody, the doctors have given me six weeks to live. Hmm. And I slumped to my knees. I rolled off that toilet paper roll till there was no more. And I said, I'm going to do something back for you, mom. I hung up. Talked to my then husband and I got on the plane next, next day. I was living in Atlanta at the time, went back to Montana, went to this Laurel library. It's about as big as my house. And I went to alternative health back then. It was about this big. And I saw this book by Edgar Casey, dated 1886. I blew off the dust and I ran to the front of the librarian, I said, I must have this. Well, you're from out of, I said, I'm Joe D, you remember me because everybody knew, knew you. Took it home. You can only imagine the celebration my mother had. And I had when we hit seven weeks and it kept going on with these ancient protocols. Gave her nearly three years length of life, well beyond her six weeks to live diagnosis. She got to experience my sons because I moved in with her. She Actually, my sons now in their 40s remember my mom. And when she was transitioning out of this world, Rima, and I want to end with this. I know this was a little elongated, but it means so great. much to me that she looked at me and said, Jody, you must give others hope the way you've given it to me. And that's what I've done now for the last 40 years. And that's what attracted me to you is the giving of hope of the way that you approach everything. So yes. when those doctors told you that you're paralyzed and your mom walked in and said, yes. it's up to you, what shifted in you that you could say, this is how I approached it. So if someone out there is struggling and there's lots of people that are struggling and it doesn't have to be a paralysis. It doesn't have to be anything as tough as that, but they're struggling within themselves. What is the thing that you could say, here's what you got to rely on within you? And I am not going to wax religious. I'm going to talk about the spiritual element. It's what I teach the six pillars of human existence. There are every single culture and religion, starting with spiritual physical, mental, mental, remember that, emotional, remember that, social and financial. I started with my spiritual pillar. I'm a believer. The one thing I asked the nurse right away, I said, I, uh, I, want, uh, I want a Bible. They put it underneath so I could read it. I said, somebody going to stay here and turn the pages for me? They said, sure. And I said, well, I'm probably going to be here for a while. So I imagine I'm going to get to the right of the book too. So you, you focus on your spiritual pillar because there is someone, the creator of all is taking care of each and every one of us. And then number two, have a sense of humor. Nobody gets out of here alive. Okay. <laughs> We're all born alone, die alone. What are you going to do between the hashes? Have a sense of humor about this because it's what you're going through. You will get through. Thank you for that. Uh, so many individuals that I talk to, they get stuck in yes. the belief that it's never going to change, that they're in that habit forever. So starting mm -hmm. with 
the belief and the faith is one. What would you take them to next if you said humor? Here's the next thing. Humor. Humor. <laughs> humor. Because laughter, laughter automatically cre it creates a higher frequency. So what do you think the laughter did to create a frequency that, so that my brain was going not, oh, I'm down. And it made up. It, it lit up. And number three is this, Rima. And I believe this with my whole heart. I live this. Okay. And it's going ahead and deciding that it's not mine. Did you notice I said I had an accident? I do not become my disease, my situation, or my accident. It's not my neck. It isn't my accident. It's not my bank account. No, it's the bank account. It's the emotion. When you can stay totally focused with no emotion and no attachment, you will, what you're going through, as I've already said, as Les Brown has given me this quote, my mentor and coach, what you're going through, you will get through. Your diagnosis is not your prognosis. I love that because you separated yourself from the event. Mm. And that's what a lot of individuals tend to not do. They tend to make themselves the event that yes. they just went through. I know mental health right now is so big in the United States and all over the world. And with you teaching health, what would you say is one of the things we need to start to truly go towards so that we can have a healthier nation, have healthier people throughout the world? What would you begin gearing them to do? And Rima, you're so right to focus in on this because it used to be two out of five families had someone with mental illness. Since COVID, it's gone up to 3.5 of five. Is that ridiculous? Yeah. So, That's... so what I say, yeah, I'm going to come back to mm -hmm. the pristine clean parasites. I have, I have an example of a client whose daughter was 15 diagnosed with being um, schizophrenic and bipolar was really had suicidal. It was in a straight jacket in the psych ward. And I said to her mom, I said, what is what is it going to hurt to do this particular parasite protocol? I'm not going to share it here because it really needs to be monitored by a, an alternative healthcare provider. So she did what I said. You can smuggle it in. What's it going to hurt? Right now she is wigged out. She didn't know. She thought it was like the three faces of Eve. It was that bad. She was on this protocol for three weeks and her mother came in one day. She said, Ma, what am I doing here? See, the parasite had overtaken her brain. Mm -hmm. And she said, you will not believe what happened in the, in, in the bathroom this morning. And she was back. It could be as easy as that because we get stuck to on looking at and thinking, I'm just going to get a fix because even, and I am not against, I'm not anti-drug. Sometimes you need to take a prescription. Sometimes you need to take a drug, but at the end of your life, Ladies and gentlemen, do you want to look at the bottom of a bowl of petroleum-based pills? Or do you want to go in, slide in, in mind, body, and spirit? Notice it says mind first, then body and spirit to our maker and say, hi, glad to meet you. That in of itself, check the side effects because one prescription can cause another, can cause another, can cause another. Just like an example, an, an antibiotic, do you know what the natural form of an antibiotic, where it came from? Um, the disease itself? Am the, I right? <laughs> well, that's a, that's a good, but what you could treat it, which, which is a natural, uh, a, I should have said it differently, what you could, could go ahead and do a natural alternative to taking an antibiotic. It's oregano oil. No wonder the Mediterraneans are so, so, so healthy. Oregano oil, instead of taking a prescription antibiotic. Now I'm not prescribing, I, nothing can mitigate, cure, no surgeries, no therapies, no pills, no natural remedies. The body put in the right condition can heal itself. So back to your question, mental health. I would also say eating clean, first detoxing and then eating clean, but eating 
not just clean. Oh, well, I'm eating organic foods. No, 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 no. I'm going to throw one in. Are you ready? You're ready. Food, food combinations. How many times have we seen you go to a steakhouse? What do, you, what do they give you? Steak and? Potatoes. <laughs> Worst combination on planet Earth. Proteins and starches do not go. Just like if you go ahead and have fruit as a dessert, it will putrefy in your intestines for at least five days. Nasty stuff. But at least you know you won't do that again. See, you eat fruit 20 minutes after your digestion. That's why you have a salad because the roughage will move on through. Then if you want a starch, think about children, Rima. What do children do? They will have their little pate with their little square things divided. Have you ever seen a child go, they 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 eat all of one thing first and then they go to the next, don't they? Yes, and they, they do. go to the next. Why did we lose that as children? That simple technique, because what I teach, things are easy, sustainable, and simplistic. Because if they're simplistic, then you're going to remember them. If they're easy to do, you're going to do them. And if they're sustainable, you'll get results. So even look at how you're combining your foods. I know I'm referring to my website, drjody.com, but I have written several published articles on how to eat alkaline, how to combine foods, the 10 rituals to rock your day. They're all there. These aren't just things I've thought about. These are things that I have monetized and published in everything from the New England Journal of Medicine to Senior Living to, to Thrive Magazine, among others. I'd love for you to touch on what alternative medicine truly is so people understand it and how that encompasses how a person could live well. Alternative medicine, the way I, I tell people, it's preventative. Most, most of everybody goes ahead and you have three signs. You have the tap on the shoulder, the two by four, the Mack truck. Most people wait to get treated when the Mack truck hits them. Just human nature. Biggest mistake people make that I hear all the time is you say, I had this symptom. Maybe it will go away. Listen to the warning signs of your body. That is alternative medicine. Is It's getting foundational. Mm -hmm. That's what foundational health. This is foundations of health. Getting down to the bottom with Pristine clean, the parasite cleanse. Alternative medicine is that building your body up with yin and yang. It's building your system up in this six month protocol that I take take people through. Sure, I I do onesie twosies as consultations, but most of my clients will at least do a three month program. Most do a six month, and some of them just never want to leave because there's always something new. Alternative medicine is preventative medicine. It's true health. Now, if I had a broken a broken ankle, I would not go to a health coach. I would go to the ER, I would have the ankle set, but what I would do alternatively, not taking the drugs, I would take Arnica, I would take MSM to, as an anti-inflammatory, I would take turmeric. There are things that I would do as an alternative to Western medicine. I like to refer to Eastern and Western medicine. Putting it together is a great thing because preventative medicine will help both Eastern and Western medicine. And I think Western medicine is thankfully beginning to catch up to some of the Eastern medicine and understand that it definitely has incredible benefits that our modern science has not been able to solve. No. I would love for you to really delve into what a lot of people end up doing is they go, oh, I have this issue. So they'll Google something and they'll tell them, you know, drink alkaline water. And so they'll think that that one thing is going to all of a sudden transform their health because they changed that one thing, but they're not looking at their completeness. So I love that you touched on that people come in and they go through a program that goes yes. directly to them and what they go through. So if you were standing in front of an individual that is definitely struggling with number of pounds, mm -hmm. 
where would you begin with them in that journey instead of going, okay, here's alkaline water, that's going to fix it all. Because that's what a lot of people say. It's like, no, (laughs) no, 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 no. And, and it's a good thing to do. I don't believe in fluoride. That's my personal belief. But I, it's just like anything else. Any coach will take you through visualization, goals and dreams. As I said, transformation is an inside job. I'm honored to have uh, said in my practice over a million pounds of toxic fat lost. Only a 5% recidivism rate because they transform from the inside. So if say, it says, I have 50 pounds to lose, we back it up and say, that's about 10 pounds a month. Some will come off faster, some slower. It's a five month program because slow, sustainable weight loss is not a diet. Notice what the word die, die is in diet. Ooh, ouch. Okay, so that is one, one approach. The other one is I said, look at what my degree, my PhD is in. It is in holistic nutrition. And if somebody says, well, I'm going to do this one thing. I said, that's a half-listic approach. Now, would you like the holistic approach? <laughs> Which would you prefer? And that's usually will trigger somebody to say, okay, I'm listening. Because although the alkaline water Rima, is good, it's a half-listic approach. It's one thing is not going to fix it all. It It's just like, one size fits most ever tried on a girdle. And if you're a size 14, you're not going to wear the same size as a woman who's a size two. Okay. One size does not fit all does not fit most. And so it has to be a holistic approach. It needs to. And yes, I do require my clients to get their blood work because there may be something in this. And then we just begin this journey on just how actually one, two or three, how committed are you? Do you just want to get off your urban diet? Great. There's a program. Do you want to go ahead and learn how to live at least with some energy, but I still want to eat meat. I still want to do this. Or do you really want to rejuvenate a hundred percent? And when people want to be a three, we still start with the making sure that you start at first and everyone that comes in as a consultant that's consulted by me will do a three day food diary. So there's, you can't guess, you can't wish, you can't hope, you can't hide. I want to see what you've eaten for the past three days, or even today before we had this conversation, I would say to them, and then they write it down because awareness. So you don't know what you don't know until you know. That's right. Correct? That's right. (laughs) Because a lot of individuals will look at things, go, oh, I need to be a vegetarian. I need to be a vegan. I need, it's like, wait, 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 wait. Before you jump into all of that, where is your foundation of your own health and what you have to work on so that you can become that? So reaching out to someone who understands this and has studied it is a key instead of Googling a lot of stuff and going back to the mental health issue. We don't have a mental health issue. Yes, that's the how it's manifesting, but it's the not living healthy is they're not treating our minds well, not treating our bodies well. So how do we begin the process again for people to pay attention to what they do in their own lives? If they're not going to go through a program, Mm -hmm. what could you offer them to go, here's some things to really pay attention to? First of all, know what your blood type is. Because when you know what your blood type is, my husband is a carnivore. I'm a vegetarian. I am a negative. It's the only ne- th- thing that's negative about me, Rima. Okay. <laughs> My husband is an, oh, he is a carnivore. He needs meat. If I put mm-hmm. him on a vegetarian diet, it would not work. That is something I have espoused for four decades. All right. Remember that was the, the health food, first health food store I went into looked like the Laurel Montana library. There was this 90 year old woman sitting back there with this dusty old book and says, oh, somebody in here. He was so <laughs> excited. I even started laughing myself. It, somebody's here. Somebody actually wants to buy something from me and think how we've evolved. So that's number one. <laughs> know your blood type. The same, it must be really important because I was like getting a little choked up. Now, the other thing is fasting. Beca- depending on your blood type, every person 
will be much healthier. I don't care what you eat, even frankenfoods. Um, if you go ahead and, and do intermittent fasting and the time that you intermittently fast is different for each blood type. I need 18 hours. I don't eat breakfast, never have. If I eat breakfast, I'm going to be bloated the entire day. <clears throat> Just the way you listen to your body, that at all to it, that to it in altitude, al to it is you and me, that intuition. Okay, that's number two. Number three, meditate. Everything you ever wanted in life, we can learn from kindergartners. Remember that the three tiered plate that they were on, they ate one and then the other. What did every kindergartner look forward to? Nap time and coloring. So have a nap time. If you fall asleep, oh well, but meditate, find a time to have a quick meditation in the morning and in the afternoon. Former president John F. Kennedy said nap time was the reason he got through for any time. Mm. Barack Obama said the same thing. His nap time, they knew his staff, even how former president Trump went and they said he did it from, for four hours of sleep. You know why? Because he took a, a, a nap or meditation in the morning and the afternoon because meditation for 20 minutes is like two hours worth of sleep. That's incredible. Because so many of the stuff that's out there is so opposite of what you're saying for people to actually become healthy. <laughs> oh, well, maybe, maybe we need to change it from alternative medicine to opposite medicine. It's, 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 it is just the absolute diametrically opposed. I said, but Jody, I've never meditated. This is how easy it is. You, you breathe in and breathe out. Take three deep breaths. Notice the surroundings around you. Close your eyes. And if you want a great place to be in, if you go to my YouTube channel, at Jody Bear, it's nothing fancy. There is an amazing meditation by Dr. Carol Magda. She's a colleague of mine. She's a naturopathic doctor. And she was the surgeon general in the country of Canada. In other words, the top doc in the country of Canada for over 15 years. She takes you through a meditation and you know how she ends it? Oh, I think I'm going to save that until the end of our, our podcast. <laughs> I've got a surprise for you. We're going to do that, Rima. It's going to be fun. That's great. So what is next for you? Because you obviously have to already have two shows, yes. one on TV and one in a radio. You have already uh, two books out that are international bestsellers. What is the next great project and why do you care so much? I'm lumping um, them together on purpose because- Oh, yes. I, I get the chance to interview a lot of wonderful people and your passion and the hope that you give is mm -hmm. what grabbed my attention more than anything. So what's next for you and why do you care? What a beautiful compliment. I just received that, Rima. Because if you go and you, you view, let's say you view a Monday show, you will hear a song and what it is with Alicia Williamson, I was singing her background vocals back in the nineties. And the song is there is hope. Look it up as a CD. It will lift your spirits. Like everything music is important for me. You talk about mental health because music raises your frequency. Now I said that I'm 68 and three quarters years old. I sold my practice in January, 2020. I had a beautiful practice and I never advertised. I didn't have a website. It was like out there, but nobody bothered with it. I'm a health coach. I'm a holistic nutritionist. I said to my husband, I'm 66. It's time. Now we know, and I want to just backtrack, not only weight loss, but something I am most proud of in my practice I had on my back office wall, it was covered. Over 700 babies were born with parents that couldn't conceive. They, always, they come to me at the last part, but you know, you get that into that holistic approach. They get pregnant, they got a diaper. They had the reveal party or they waited until the baby was born. It got a pink or a blue sticker. 
And then we put the name on with a bottle of champagne when that baby came in my office. It was my joy because I gave those parents hope. So here I am back on the ranch, January, 2020. We all know what hit in February. And my husband, I want to thank Bob Bear forever because he said, there's a pandemic out there. I said, I know. He said, well, what are you going to do about it? I said, I'm retired. Next day he comes to me. He said, just how much yoga are you going to do? And I said, but I, I've signed a non-circumvent. I have no clients. I'm, I'm 66 years old. And I went on and on. I don't have a website. I'm not good on the internet. I don't know. I don't, I, 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 and he, he pulled up Napoleon Hill's Think and Grow Rich. And he mm -hmm. said, and when you get done with the 57th alibi, there's no 58. I don't know anyone that knows what you know, Jody, the world needs you. So guess what I did, Rima? I went ahead. I'm thinking I can look at the website. I can do something besides email. I can go ahead and do this. I, I, I. So Dr. Jody got busy. She found the app called Clubhouse. She found it through my, it's always through somebody, through somebody, because we are two points of separation at this point. I was on, somebody asked me to speak for a women's three-day health event. So I spoke. Guess who was in front of, it was after me. I was in front of him speaking. It was Les Brown. <laughs> and he said to the host, he said, who is this speaker that spoke before me on health? And she said, it was Dr. Jody Bear. He says, I've never heard somebody so impassioned on health. I'm going to give her 60 days free coaching from me. And it began. The next thing you know, I'm writing in a collaborative book with Les Brown. I meet J.B. Owen with her pink hair. I said, I must know you. So if some, if, if what is in your mind, like it was in mine, I didn't even know that it's just hibernating there like a bear, no pun intended on my name, but it's just hibernating there. What, what you are sitting on, someone is waiting on for real, for real. Then we write, and all of a sudden I'm writing in wisdom. In this story, it's about my paralysis. This story is about when I was also 36 and I got a note on the kitchen table. Remember those two boys that are now in elementary school? I'm thinking, okay, I'm, I'm good to go. Got the picket fence, got the husband, got the, uh, got the, I had a note on the kitchen table from my husband. And it said, I'm not coming home. And I knew it wasn't, I'm not coming home from dinner. And what I want to leave with you, whether you're a man and you found yourself abandoned, <clears throat> whether you're a woman, what you're going through, you can get through. I got my children off, my boys off to, uh, to school that morning. There was one number in our two bank accounts. It was similar. The number was zero. I also found out that it was three months, three months behind on our mortgage. And I got busy and I created within my scope of my expertise, I broadened out and had a million dollar business in six months because I needed to. And I saw, and I had never written anything in my life. I've done a lot of coaching and training, but speaking was something new to me. Look at that new thing. Everything you want is outside of your comfort zone to break through that fear because awareness creates better instincts. So I was aware. Now what's coming out in February, 2023. I'm so excited. I know that was a long answer to your story. I no, no, I was <laughs> <I'm a> <laughs> because I took my dissertation, my doctoral dissertation, and it's only a really good placement that's really high. That's about all they're ever good for. But yeah, why do you do this? I, I saw my husband take his PhD from Oxford and it was on the ancient Spanish monastery of William Randolph Hearst and turn it into a New York Times bestselling book. I thought, honey, would you show me how to do this? I'm taking my dissertation and turning it in to what I know will be a bestselling book. It's the 21 days to your best you foundations for a life worth living. And I love the way you say everything because you oh. take the individual through this journey of 
when you're down, you yes. get up. You get up. And your husband did that for you with the pandemic hitting. It's yes. like, okay, now you gave me your list of 57 excuses. Okay, at 58, let's go. And yes. it's interesting because you do that for individuals automatically in the way that you coach, in the way that you teach things. And in the books that you're putting out, it's for someone to go through that process of building themselves up. It's been my journey of saying to people, you got to be kind, but you got to start with kindness for yourself. Oh, without a doubt. That's that. It take it, When you take care of you and your world first, and that's not narcissistic. The world is empowered forever. The 21 days to your best you, there are three keys. The first is the first seven days are for you. It's a life book, a workbook. You have exercises. You have things to, to write down your notes at the end. Then the next seven days, because 21 days to make or break a habit. The next seven days are relationally what, like we're, what we're doing. And then the last seven days are societal. So it just fits into that. And as they say, the Ginsu Knife commercial, but wait, there's more because- <laughs> Through the Healthopedia network, I just got an idea. Don't you always get ideas in the shower? I'm thinking, <laughs> I know there's the PDR for, for Western medicine. You know, the one, the physician's mm. desk reference, they pull it off. I know of none for alternative healing for Eastern medicine. So we're putting together the foundational Healthopedia. If there is a practitioner, famous person, healer, or even someone with expertise out in your audience, contact me because we're putting together at least 50. We've just begun this 50 people writing their story, five pages, their story, their philosophy, story, philosophy, story, philosophy in these seven segments and six pillars of human existence. Then we're going to take it on the road. And after that, um, I don't know what's next for me, but that's at least a couple of things. That's wonderful. I'd love to see you out in every state and every country for people to begin to understand that they do own the power yes. to change their life. Like you said, in six months, you could be completely different. Biologically, you could be completely different. And that's what a lot of people don't take in is that it's in them. Everything is within them to be able to do those things. Mm -hmm. so is there beautiful. anything anything that you'd like to share that I may not have asked Jody. Right. Right you just, you are a gym dandy host. That's all I can say. <laughs> and, and, and it's just, it is just my honor. I would just encourage people just begin the first step. It's not the finish. Just get started. Just get started. You don't know what you don't know until you know Get started with it's me, get started with somebody because with weight loss, with a million pounds of toxic fat, only 7% of anybody on any program will lose weight if it's by themselves. 60% mm. are with an accountability partner and it's a 90% success rate with a coach. So it's that integrative approach that's that integrative approach with life. I think about Tiger Woods as iconic as he was with a golf swing in his prime. His dad was a coach, but he always brought in and as good as his dad was, that was an outside coach to watch his swing. Get a mentor, get a coach because the world is waiting on your story. The world is waiting for what you do because only you can do what you can do. Because as Les Brown says, it's possible. It is possible for you to open up the keys to a whole new future. That See about turning that key, you have to begin. And know that it's possible, I'm possible, you're possible, Rima, and everyone has that kind of possibility too. So just listen. Listen to the whispers, that inter intuitive voice. Into it. Into me, you see, and into myself, I see. So listen to those whispers of your own wisdom, because in those whispers of wisdom, Rima, there is life. And in life, 
there is always hope. Thank you so much for this opportunity. I so appreciate you. We will come back in a few months and do an update so that people can learn even more. And in the show notes, there'll be ways for them to connect with you. But for everyone that's listening, always remember your attitude is determining your altitude in life. So if you want to step beyond where you are today, start with that attitude. Dr. Jody, thank you so much. And we will see you guys in the next episode. Anything May else I do there? just one of other course. thing? Please. Because I forgot about this. I got Go two ahead. other things. I, I just, I can't help myself. Okay. Go. Remember I said about the meditation? Yes. This is what Dr. Carol does at the end. Are you ready? Ready. Do it with me. Happy, happy. Happy, happy. Joy, joy. Joy, joy. Happy, happy, joy. Happy, happy, joy. Happy, happy, joy, joy. Happy, happy, joy. Because it gets you off of the mm. rhythm. That's what meditation does. <laughs> happy, happy, joy, joy. Happy, happy, joy. And why we need each other, especially in mental illness, in everything, what we're doing today. Put your hand on your heart, my dear, would you please? Mm -hmm. Feel your pulse. Now take your other hand. Put it over your right. What happens? Your beat gets stronger. I needed you. You needed me. We need each other. And with that, that's my PS. Thank you for letting me share those last two gems. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You definitely said what I say, that we're all a planet of one and we need each other. <laughs> thank you. Thank you.